Hello and welcome to another lectureclips.com statics tutorial. Today we are concerning ourselves with friction. We have a box on an inclined plane which is abrasive. The given quantities are the mass m of the box and the angle alpha which is the angle by which the plane is tilted from a horizontal. Now the question at hand is how big does mu s at least have to be in order for the box not to slip? Ok, so before starting with the problem I would like to say a few things about friction in general. What is friction? Well, friction always shows through the frictional force. Let's assume that the plane is smooth, ok? Of course the box would slide down in that case because of its weight force. In reality though the surface is usually not smooth but abrasive. And in addition to that, depending on how big this angle alpha is, it is possible for the box to be imbalanced and not to move, even though it still has a weight force. Uh, the mu s, which is asked of us, is called coefficient of the limit of friction. It gives us information about how abrasive the surface actually is. So the bigger mu s is, the more abrasive is the surface. And if mu s was really small, for example, the surface would be rather smooth. Mu s usually has values between 0 and 1, but it can be bigger than that. Okay, it is possible for mu s to have a value like 5 or greater. Now, every time when an abrasive plane occurs in mechanics, we need to consider two forces in our free body diagram. A normal force, which is perpendicular to the ground and perpendicular to the box, and a friction force, which is parallel to the ground. Now, if we have a point of contact, the place where these two forces appear is obvious. But if we have a contact area, like we have in this problem, we can't tell where the normal force and friction force act. Yeah? We don't know where they act on this area. So what we do is we draw them randomly on the box. Uh, this implies though that we lose an equation for our calculation. Because we can't use a torque equ equilibrium if we don't know any distances. In mechanics we generally differ between two kinds of friction. Static friction and kinetic friction. For static friction the following is true. The absolute value of the force F friction static is less or equal Fn times mu s. The very important thing is that we have the absolute value of the friction force here. Because we don't know the direction of the friction force at the beginning. We can choose the direction randomly. So should the calculation tells us that the friction force is negative, the absolute value will make it positive again and tells us that the direction of the friction force we assumed was wrong. And also be aware of the inequation here. The equal sign marks the marginal condition. So if the friction force is equal times Fn times mu s, we have a situation where the system is barely at balance or where the box barely starts moving. For kinetic friction the box moves and has a velocity. The very big difference between static and kinetic friction is that the direction of the force F friction kinetic matters and cannot be chosen freely. The force FFK tries to prevent the box from moving and therefore has to show in the opposite direction as the velocity. Okay, This is the very important fact. Now what is asked in this problem is the mu s where the box is still at equilibrium. So we are talking about static friction since the box must not move. And now if we look at the equation for static friction we see that we only need to calculate f friction static and the normal force because then we can simply solve this inequation for mu s. Ok, the free body diagram will look like this. Now for the conditions of equilibrium we can use two coordinate systems. One we can choose a horizontal and vertical coordinate system or we can choose an inclined coordinate system which I chose. When using an inclined coordinate system we see that the forces FFS and Fn are pointing the directions of the coordinates but just the weight force mg doesn't. And now what we have to do is we need to put the angle alpha on the line of action of the weight force. Uh, and then we see that this angle right here is alpha again and then we can find the components of the weight force mg, mg times cosine alpha and mg times sine alpha. After having found these components of mg we can easily come up with the equations of equilibrium which are sum of all forces in x direction equals to zero. Remember 
those forces pointing in the same direction as the positive counting direction of the x-axis need to have a positive sign. And the same goes for the y-axis. After solving these equations, we get the relationship for the force F friction static, which is mg times sine alpha, and the normal force Fn is mg times cosine alpha. And now we can insert them into the equation of the static friction. The result is this equation. And if we divide by mg times cosine alpha, we're left with mu on one side of the equation. And we see that m and g then is cancelled out, and we only have sine alpha divided by cosine alpha left, which is known as the tangent alpha. And this is the final result. Now we have solved the problem. Let's just take a moment to interpret the result. If the plane was very smooth, the angle alpha can be very small, and so would be the tangent alpha. In this case, the mu s only has to be bigger than the small tangent alpha, so mu s can also be quite small. And if alpha was bigger, so the tangent alpha would be, and then mu s would accordingly have to be bigger even than that. So we need to have a huge mu s to keep the box in equilibrium. This means that the mu s grows in proportion to the angle alpha. And that makes perfect sense if you, if you consider that the more steep the plane is, the more abrasive the surface has to be in order for the box to stay in place. Okay, thanks for watching and see you soon.